Hey there, lovely people. Welcome or welcome back to another Story Study Saturday. I'm Sammy and I'm a writer who likes to learn about writing through reading and share what I learn with you. This week I'm actually really excited to say that this book was given to me by the author in exchange for an honest review. So that's what I'm here for. And because I absolutely admire Sophia's confidence in sending me this book, I'm going to be a little bit kinder than I would have for a bigger author's review. But this week I'm going to talk to you about The Crooked Little Pieces by Sophia Lambton. Now I can say that I don't think I can do justice to the summary, so I'm going to read the summary off of Goodreads and also put it right here as I do so, because there's also something I want to address in the summary that was posted online. Lost are the creatures destined never to be understood. 1926, Professor Joseph von der Holt obtains a post at an all-women's college overseas. Stuffy London suddenly becomes the site for the unseemly exploits of his half-Dutch, half-German daughters, Annalise and Isabel. When tragedy carves out a hollow in their lives, a severed soul sends the sororial twins along a jagged path. While Isabel takes flight in sensual hedonism, Annalise skirts danger in her role as sleuth. Elusive are the sentiments they seek, swift stopovers of fleeting feeling. Lopsided loves and passions scarcely probable veer each away from the predictable. And when the obvious appears unstoppable, the opposite may be achingly true. Spanning the 20th century's five most volatile decades, The Crooked Little Pieces is a series about inextricable entanglements. Perverse relationships pervade a glossary of scenes. Bots crisscross over a rich tapestry of twists and tension fueling characters. Some relatable, others opaque, and many, quote, crooked. It is television drama novelized. The struggle that I went through having to read those words out loud, I did not anticipate at all. But there is a lot to say about the diction in that summary that relates directly to the diction in the story. But so let's get into my thoughts and we'll go from the positive things into the things that I thought could be improved. Now what I will say is that this is very consistent in its style. It is very true to itself and what it intends to be. This is influenced entirely by the author's preferences and not necessarily by what is expected in the modern book scene, like what books are selling, what that kind of stuff is. It's just what it needs to be itself. There's no, not really any tropes or expectations that are directly influencing how the story progresses. And along with that, the characters are all very, very individual, including the side characters who are interacted with on several occasions. They all have their own personality, their own values, their own things that they're working towards, and that's all very, very clear. Even with having twins as your main characters, there is a trap that people can fall into where they'll write their twins to be so dramatically different or very, very similar. And this falls on a realistic line where they have enough in common that comes from growing up in the same home and having the same values and seeing the world from the same general perspective that their differences shine out in complement to that rather than being something that stands out because it's different. And I do think that this book has a few things that I would improve. And a lot of it comes from my personal preference for reading. So this book is definitely not for me personally. It is definitely for somebody who is a more academic reader, somebody who likes to be challenged with their books, somebody who is looking to read to gain more vocabulary to it, something that is more of a challenge. I would give this book as a recommendation to somebody who enjoys reading classic novels and has run out of all of the classic novels to read. That's the person who would want to read this. And I'm not somebody who's afraid of classic novels. I've read every one of Shakespeare's plays. I have six classic novels on my shelf right over there, and that shelf is mostly just notebooks at this point. So in terms of the fiction books that I have on hand, those are the most, and I just don't prefer to read them, and that's personal preference. So let's get into the things that I think could be improved to satisfy my taste a bit more. Given the description of it being a television drama novelized, I expected something a lot 
more, something with a, a lot more movement to it, more drama, more conflict, more stakes, more going on. Because you say television drama, I think like HBO series, which has a lot higher stakes and a lot of writers working on them and that kind of stuff. That single line of description in the summary was the thing that made me think, yeah, I would be happy to read this book and give an honest review. I think it would be great. And it just didn't live up to my standards. So I don't know if that is a difference of I watch American television dramas and Sophia is in London. I believe, which gives potential for there to be just a disconnect there, but it's not what I signed up for while I was reading. It took a while from my perspective to get into the start of the story, and that is due to a few other things, which are some things that I also think could be improved. One of which is the language in this. It's very, very academic. I don't want to believe that I have a small vocabulary, so I just think that the vocabulary used in this book was a lot wider than my normal realm of understanding, where I'm sure that if I were to have picked up this book in a physical copy, I would have just read with my knowledge of how words work and context clues to get through the story. But because I was reading on my Kindle, I had the opportunity to look up definitions simultaneously to reading. And there were a lot of words that did not mean what I had expected them to mean. And I would never have used them, especially at the very beginning of the book when we we're following the mindset through third person of six-year-olds and the language was just so advanced that I ended up looking further on in the book when we were following the father character through the story if the narration style adjusted to give us his thoughts and it did. So that tells me that the narration style regularly throughout the book is following the character that we are focusing on which says that six-year-olds are using words that are not in my 24-year-old vocabulary having studied writing. That's a big disconnect for me. I don't know if it's something that would be a big disconnect for other readers or if that would just be part of the style. For me, it's not motivated and it doesn't make sense for the language to be that advanced. So that is something that I would change about this is that the language would be more accessible because a lot of the words that were chosen were just the most advanced version of another word. As if you just took a thesaurus to the first draft and said, how can I make this sound smarter? And then use those instead of the words that you naturally bring up. And I think personally books that use the words that naturally come up make better entertainment. But that's also to say this book may not have been written for the sake of entertainment. It feels like the summary is marketing it as entertainment. So that's something that I also feel is a little bit disconnected if it's supposed to be more of an educational learn about an era, learn about a language style, learn about that kind of thing. And it's not put out that way. I also think that the language choice actually stunts the plot. And that has a lot to do with what I had talked about in my pacing video, because the language is so tripping that it's hard to keep up with the plot of the story. So moments feel like they're taking hours because you are taking so long to comprehend what is happening in the scene because the language is so advanced or from my perspective, no reason. Another thing that stops us from getting into the story quickly is a prologue that takes place significantly later than the start of the story. And I, am fine with prologues. I will always read the prologue, but I won't always feel good about having read the prologue. And this is definitely one of those stories that I do not feel good about reading the prologue because it didn't give me anything. And I feel pretty actively that if you're going to have a prologue, it should always give something that would not have been received if you just started on page one. All that it gave me in the prologue was that these sisters aren't friends. And we see that in that first chapter, that they're not really friends right away. So we wasted a lot of time in that prologue, seeing something that happens later in their lives, just to go into the beginning of their lives and see the same thing happening on a smaller scale. I firmly believe that your prologue should be either very, very action-filled or filled with 
high stakes situations or it should give the reader important information that they need to understand the story, like a backstory. And I feel pretty confident that a lot of my problem with the story is because of the diction, because of the word choice that is used throughout, that it's difficult. It feels like work to read because I enjoy the people in the story. That's what I go for when I'm choosing a book is like, what people do I want to see succeed? What challenges do I want to see people overcome? And it's not how many words can I learn? And this book, I learned a lot of words. I learned a lot of words from it for sure, but it just doesn't give you story the way that I was expecting from the summary. And looking back on it now, having read the book and read the summary out loud to you, the expectations were set in that summary for what the diction was going to be like, but I thought that the summary was just a bit dramatized to get people to want to read the book. How much stumbling I did reading that is directly related to how the book is written. I would not ever want to record an audiobook of this story because it would just be me stuttering. Take that for what you will. It's definitely a book for someone. I am just not that someone. A lot of this reminded me of Chekhov's Three Sisters, which is a play that I had to read in college in some of my theater courses and it's a lot about life. It's about just going through life and there not really being that much going on. I'm a high stakes kind of person. That's the kind of story that I look for is something that is intense, I guess. And this just wasn't it. And that's just not for me. But if you are somebody who liked Three Sisters or likes the more low key kind of stories, this might be for you. And if you're somebody who likes like Jane Austen or who else do I have? Emily Bronte, F. Scott Fitzgerald, those people, that kind of writing. You would probably enjoy this book as well. So what can writers learn from this story? I think that in terms of this story being in a the historical fiction genre, it's done really well in the way of making the past feel like present rather than establishing those senses of other that sometimes come up when you are writing historical fiction from a modern standpoint. It feels very much like we're in that time and the things that stand out from that time from our current time aren't super noticeable in comparison because we are so set in that time that the world that they are working in makes complete sense. And that's really great world building for this historical fiction. And even as somebody who doesn't really know much about like Europe in the 1900s, this did a really good job of making me feel like I knew something about it. It also does a really good job of distinguishing characters while still creating that sense of similarity and closeness. And you can see that really well through the twins as they are like in school towards the beginning and how they interact with their father and how the father interacts with the twins at the beginning as well. And it's also a good example of telling the story that you want to tell because this is a self-published book. I was reached out to directly by the publishing company, which is Sophia Lampton's publishing house. And this is going to be a part of a series. And it is clearly influenced by having read the classics and having an enjoyment of reading the classics and the way that those texts read and trying to emulate and recreate that. And this book was not written with me in mind. It was not written probably with you in mind. It was written with the author in mind and now it is out and ready to be put into other people's hands who are interested in it. And I think that that confidence is something that a lot of writers lack and they end up writing stuff that they don't care about and because they don't really care about it, they don't ever finish it. And then you have the cycle of not feeling like you are worth it as a writer because you were writing something based on what's selling or what you think you should be writing rather than what story you want to be telling. So that's definitely something you can pick up from this book. But that's all I've got for you today. If you have any interest, if the people I described that I think would potentially like this book sounds like you, I've got links in the description to where you can get this book. If you like this video, please leave a like, it'll really help me out. And if you don't wanna miss any of my uploads, hit that subscribe button. I post videos on Tuesdays for Writing Tip Tuesday and and on Saturdays for Story Study Saturdays. If you have any books that you would like me to check out, leave a comment down below. And if you go out and get this book and you read it and you have different thoughts than me, let me know in the comments what you think about it. I would be happy to have a book chat with you. But I will see you guys on Tuesday.